Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vibhash Kumar Ved and today in this video we are going to discuss about the osteology of mandible. The mandible is the most movable, strongest and largest part of the facial bone. So let's see in the detail. This is a mandible and it is the largest and strongest bone of the face and it is developed from the first pharyngeal arch and you can observe it has a body and two ramus. The body of the mandible is horseshoe shaped. You can observe this body is horseshoe shaped and this body which wear a teeth. Then you can observe on the posterior to the body here two rami and this two rami which project upward from the posterior end of the body. Here you can observe this two rami which project upward from the posterior end of the body. Then the rami which provide attachment to the muscle of the mastication. Now we will discuss first the body. So this is the body and this body has a outer and the inner surface. The outer surface present a mental symphysis over here you can see mental symphysis and this mental symphysis is a line at which the right and the left half of the bone meet each other you can observe the right half as well as the left half of the bone which meet at this mental symphysis then the lower part of the mental symphysis you can observe a triangular elevation and this triangular elevation is called the mental protuberance here you can observe this is the mental protuberance and inferior lateral to this mental protuberance you can observe on the both side uh, another elevation and this elevation is called the mental tubercle here this is called the mental tubercle then the mental foramen you can observe here a small foramen and this foramen is called the mental foramen and this mental foramen present below the interval between the two premolar teeth you can see here this is the one premolar teeth and here a second premolar teeth below an interval between these two premolar teeth here you can observe a foramen and this foramen is called the mental foramen here also then the oblique line you can observe this line is a considered as a oblique line and this oblique line is a continuation of the sharp anterior border of the ramus here this is the ramus and here this is the anterior border of the ramus and the anterior border of the ramus continue as a oblique line here you can observe this oblique line runs downward and forward toward the mental tubercle then the incisive fossa you can observe here this is called the incisive fossa on the both side and this incisive fossa is depression that lies just below to the incisor tooth here this is a socket for the incisor tooth and below the incisor tooth here you can observe two fossas over here and this fossa is called the incisive fossa now the inner surface of the body this is called the inner surface of the body of the mandible and first on the inner surface of the body we can observe the mylohyoid line you can observe here this line is considered as a mylohyoid line on the both side this line considered as a mylohyoid line and this mylohyoid line is a prominent ridge that runs obliquely downward and forward below to the third molar teeth here this is a socket for the third molar teeth so this mylohyoid line which is runs from the third molar tooth to the below to the genial tubercle below the mylohyoid line you can observe here a hollowed out part and this hollowed out part is considered as a submandibular fossa which lost the submandibular gland and the same manner above the mylohyoid line here you can see another fossa and this fossa considered as a sublingual fossa which lost the sublingual gland then the posterior surface of the mental symphysis this is the mental symphysis and the posterior to this mental symphysis you can observe a bony elevation and this bony elevation is considered as a superior and inferior genial tubercle 
the superior one is considered as a upper genial tubercle and this inferior one is called the inferior genial tubercle then myeloid group here you can observe a group and this group is called the myeloid group and this myeloid group present on the ramus of the mandible and extend on to the body below the posterior end of the myeloid line this is the posterior end of the myeloid line then the upper border of the body this border consider as a upper border of the body and below this border consider as a lower border of the body this upper border is also called as alveolar border and this alveolar border bear a socket for the teeth while the lower border this border which is also called as the base of the mandible this is the base of the mandible and near the midline the base shows an oval depression here you can see a base which show a oval depression and this depression is called the digastric fossa then the ramus here we have a two rami and this ramus has a quadrilateral in shape and it has a two surface one is outer and another is inner and four border the anterior border posterior border upper border and the lower border and two process one is coronoid process and another is condylar process so here you can see this is the lateral surface of the ramus of the mandible and this lateral surface is flat and bear a number of oblique ridges then you can see this is the medial surface of the ramus of the mandible here this surface considered as a medial surface of the ramus of the mandible and this medial surface has a mandibular foramen you can see here this foramen is called the mandibular foramen and this mandibular foramen lies a little above the center of the ramus at the level of the occlusal surface of the teeth and this mandibular foramen leads into the mandibular canal and the mandibular canal descend into the body of the mandible and open into this mental foramen here this is the mental foramen then the anterior margin of the mandibular foramen here you can see this is the anterior margin of the mandibular foramen here you can also see this is the anterior margin of the mandibular foramen and this anterior margin is marked by a tongue like projection you can observe here a tongue like projection and this tongue like projection is called the lingula and this lingula is directed toward the head of the condylar process of the mandible you can observe this lingula which is directed toward the head of the condylar process then myeloid group you can see here this group is considered as a myeloid group and this myeloid group begin just below to the mandibular foramen you can observe just below to this mandibular foramen this myeloid group is begin and runs downward and forward to the gradually lost over the submandibular fossa you can observe this myeloid group which gradually lost on the submandibular fossa this is called the submandibular fossa then the upper border of the ramus here this is called the upper border of the ramus and this upper border of the ramus is thin is covered downward forming the mandibular notch here you can see this is called the mandibular notch then the lower border of the ramus this is called the lower border of the ramus and this lower border is backward continuation of the base of the mandible here you can see this is called the base of the mandible and posteriorly it end by a becoming continuation with the posterior border of the angle of the mandible here this angle consider as a angle of the mandible then the anterior border of the ramus this border is called the anterior border of the ramus it is thin while the posterior border here this border consider as a posterior border and this posterior border is thick then the coronoid process this process is called the coronoid process and this coronoid process is flattened you can observe this coronoid process is flattened and triangular upward projection from the anterior superior part of the ramus you can see here the anterior superior part of the ramus which form the coronoid process the anterior border of the coronoid process which is continue as a anterior border of the ramus 
as well as the posterior border of the coronoid process continue as a mandibular notch then the condylar process here you can see this is the condylar process and this condylar process is strong upward projection from the posterior superior part of the ramus here you can see this is the upward projection of the posterior superior part of the ramus you can observe the upper end of the condylar process is side to side expanded and form the head of the condylar process the head is covered with the fibrocartilage and articulates with the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint then just below the head you can see here a constricted part and this constricted part is considered as a neck of the condylar process and the anterior surface here you can see this is the anterior surface of the condylar process and this anterior surface is present a depression and this depression is called the pterygoid fovea this is all about the bony feature of the mandible now we'll discuss about the attachments and relations of the mandible the oblique line on the lateral side of the body which give attachment to the vaccinator as far forward as the anterior border of the first molar tooth in front of this oblique line here we have attachment of the depressor levii inferioris and depressor anguli oris then the incisive fossa you can see here this is called the incisive fossa and this incisive fossa give attachment to the mentalis and the mental slip of the orbicularis oris muscle here we have attachment of the mentalis muscle and the mental slip of the orbicularis oris muscle then mylohyoid line this line considered as a mylohyoid line and this mylohyoid line which give origin to the mylohyoid muscle the superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx arises from the area above to the posterior end of the mylohyoid line from here we have attachment of the superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx just above of the posterior end of the mylohyoid line here then terigo mandibular raphe from here the terigo mandibular raphe is attached immediately behind the third molar tooth is continuous with the origin of the superior constrictor muscle from here we have attachment of the terigo mandibular raphe then the upper genial tubercle this one is considered as a upper genial tubercle and this upper genial tubercle give attachment to the genioglossus and the lower tubercle this lower one which provide attachment of the genohyoid muscle so upper one which provide attachment of the genioglossus and lower one which provide attachment of the genohyoid muscle then the anterior valley of the digastric muscle which is arise from the digastric fossa here this is called the digastric fossa and from here we have attachment of the anterior valley of the digastric muscle then the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia which attached to the whole length of the lower border from here we have attachment of the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia then the platysma is insert on the lower border from here we have also attachment of the platysma muscle on the lower border of the body the whole of the lateral surface of the ramus except the posterior superior part and this lateral surface of the body which provide attachment to the masseter muscle from here we have attachment of the masseter muscle then the lateral surface of the posterior superior part this part is covered with the parotid gland the spinomandibular ligament which attached to the lingula you can see here this is the lingula and over the lingula we have attachment of the spinomandibular ligament the medial pterygoid muscle is attached on the medial surface of the ramus on the rough area below and behind to the mylohyoid group here we have attachment of the medial pterygoid muscle on the medial surface of this ramus then the temporalis muscle is attached on to the apex of the medial surface of the coronoid process and extend downward on the anterior border of the ramus so this part which provide attachment of the temporalis muscle the apex of the coronoid process to the anterior border of the ramus then the lateral pterygoid muscle which attach on to the pterygoid fovea this is the pterygoid fovea and over this pterygoid fovea we have attachment of the lateral pterygoid muscle then the lateral surface of the neck 
here this is the lateral surface of the neck and this surface is provide attachment to the lateral ligament of the temporomandibular joint so here we have attachment of the lateral ligament of the temporomandibular joint the mental foramen transfers the mental nerve and the vessels the inferior alveolar nerve and the vessels which enter the mandibular canal through the mandibular foramen and runs forward within the canal so this mandibular canal which provide passage for the inferior alveolar nerve and vessel then you can see here this is the mylohyoid group and in the mylohyoid group the mylohyoid nerve and the vessels lies the area above and behind to the mandibular foramen this is the mandibular foramen and just behind to the mandibular foramen this area which is related to the inferior alveolar nerve and vessels and the maxillary artery so here we have a relation of the inferior alveolar nerve and the vessels and maxillary artery then mesenteric nerve and the vessel which is passes through this mandibular notch this mandibular notch which provide passage for the mesenteric nerve and vessels the auricular temporal nerve and the superficial temporal artery are related to the medial side of the neck of the mandible this part is related to the auricular temporal nerve and superficial temporal artery the facial artery is palpable at the anterior inferior angle of the masseter muscles so here we can palpate the facial artery this is all about the mandible i hope all of you understood the topic thank you for watching